Can you talk us through what you said at half time there? I know, I can't, sorry. <laughs> um, listen, it, it was an incredible game, I suppose. You know, we we didn't turn up, you know, in the first half to a certain extent, I suppose, but, you know, Tipperary were incredible in the first 37 minutes. They blew us off the field. You know, they were stringing passes together. They were shooting from all angles. They were splitting the post left, right and centre. They killed us with two great goals, you know, off the puck outs, which we didn't deal with, but they, you know, they had a plan and they, they executed that plan really well. Um, and, you know, listen, overall, they just physically blew us off the ball, you know, throughout the first half. And I suppose, listen, in the second half, we came out and engaged way more physically in the game. We, we, we carried the ball a bit more forward and we just, our, our confidence grew after the first couple of scores. You know, we needed to get those first couple of scores and seize a bit of momentum and see if we could continue that. Uh, our full back line, half back line, you know, managed to get on top, I think. And, you know, the puck outs weren't causing us as much trouble as they were in the, in the, in the first half. Uh, but yet there were still opportunities that nearly arose, you know, that we just managed to snuff out. Um, but it was an incredible game. Um, you know, even though you'd only 6,000 here odd, it, it felt like you'd five times that. It was just an incredible occasion. But um, listen, we've been here before in Munster Finals in 2019. And, you know, um, it's really important for us now to put it behind us, get back in the training field this week. And for... You know, the lads that, you know, trained so hard this morning in Kamalak, uh, for them to push hard to, to get into our group of 26 on match day, whether it be on the 15 or on the 26. And for the guys who came off the bench today to really push hard to, uh, to secure a starting place in the team. And, uh, we're, you know, coming out of Torles the last day, we knew we were going to have to be a better team today. Uh, we weren't a better team in the first half today. And... You know, we've we've got to learn a lesson from that. You know, that's really important. We can't get, we cannot have a first half performance like that again the next day. It just cannot happen. One guy that came off the bench for you today, Aaron Galan. Can I just get your reasonings for starting him off the bench and then the impact he actually made coming off the bench? I think you've answered the question there. Yeah, he made what, a. He made what was a, the reasons for starting him on the bench? Well, sure, I'm not going to go through the 26 and explain how they all sat in the bench. You know. Uh, you know, that's the decision we made as a management team for today. We felt it was the right decision. I think that deci that decision has been borne out to have been the right decision. Sorry. How do you legislate for the heat on a day like today, and you, you score two twenty nine? Oh, Colm, you, you can't legislate for it. You know, but listen, we watched the teams yesterday. You know, look, we look, we watched Monaghan and Armagh, and look at the energy that they were able to bring to the table for an hour and twenty minutes above the yesterday. You know and under the circumstances that they were in. Like, you know, that was a brilliant example. And again, you know, Wexford and Clare put on a, a phenomenal, you know, exhibition of energy yesterday. And Dublin and, and Kilkenny yesterday above in Crow Park. So listen, teams can do it, you know. They're exhausted inside now. Both teams, I'm sure, are completely and utterly exhausted. But they have that within them. They train hard, you know, they have to push through it. They worked hard on their hydration, I'm sure, both teams did, and all the teams that were out this weekend, in order to be able to cope with these conditions. And, you know, hats off to them all. Every player that took to the pitch this weekend, it's, it's, it's difficult. When you're not used to it, it's difficult. But I think massive credit to them and to the nutritionists and, you know, s &C coaches who give them the advice on how to best prepare physically to come through that. But they are completely and utterly exhausted, you know. Where do you think you really turned the screw in that early part of the second half? 110 to Well, listen, I, I, I said, as I said earlier, I think, you know, the, the tip puck out was causing us a lot of difficulty because we weren't commanding it in the, in, the, in the first half. And, you know, they, were, they had ghost runners coming through who were coming on to breaking ball and breaking lines, and that's where the goal chances came. And we, we stopped that in the second half, you know. And, you know, we, we were probably a bit more zonal, and, you know, we contested. You know, we weren't contesting with, you know, responsibility in the first half, and we took that responsibility in the second half. We got in underneath it, you know, we won our ball, and we... You know, when we did win it, we kept going forward and we'd support runners continuously coming off the shoulder, uh, carrying that ball forward. But, uh, you know, it was an incredible second half performance. Absolutely incredible. I have to give the players just my admiration and, and they never cease to amaze us. But we have a few reference points in the past, you know, where we've come back from fairly you know, significant deficits and put in a second half performance and, you know, talking to some of the lads there in Balbatibur, you know, it is a very difficult place to be in the second half when the momentum shifts. You know, how do you stop that momentum? You know, that's 
you know, for team sports, that's we saw it, you know, in, in the in the World Cup final, for example, you know, or in the European Cup final. You know, when the, when the, the momentum shifts, it can be a terribly difficult place to be to try and turn that momentum around. John, what about the, the history of the occasion? I know history weighs heavily on us in the past in the opposite way, but you know, you've won three months of fights in a row, hasn't done it since you know 85 years plus ago. Yeah, uh, listen, we didn't. I won't say we didn't mention it, but we'd mentioned it in, in, in the context of, you know, it's there, it's, it's something that exists, but it's not impacting on our performance. It's not to impact, but, you know, uh, these boys don't have a, a, a very good rear view mirror. They, they tend to look to the future. And, you know, today was you know, something we really looked forward to. We worked very hard over the last two weeks. We wanted to be a better team today than we were two weeks ago. You know, performance against Cork, there was a lot of it that we were disappointed with. Clearly, we're leaving here today with a lot that we're not happy with either. You know, that first half performance was abysmal. But, you know, we managed to turn it around. And, again, it's a great reference point for us going forward. You know, if we do end up in a difficult situation, again, that we have that capacity within ourselves to dig deep and, you know, to unify as a, as a team, you know, I think that was the difference in the second half. We played as a real team. Every player played for the other player beside them or in front of them or behind them. Whereas in the first half, we didn't do that. John, uh, Liam Sheedy said he reckoned your first half performance was as good as they had played uh, under him. Where would you rate your third quarter performance? Third quarter performance was our strongest quarter in five years, yeah. It was, it was, it was a strong, strong... It needed to be, it had to be, you know, uh, but it was... It was up there with definitely our, our, our best, say, 16 or 17 minutes of hurling. Yeah. The guys just stood up. And... And they had to stand up. You know, listen, we were extremely disappointed with our first half performance. Really disappointed. You know, we felt we left ourselves down in many aspects of the game. You know, that we pride ourselves on, and particularly our work with. And it wasn't there in the first half. And we won't get away with that in the future if we allow that to happen again. You know, we, we managed to turn the tide today. But you won't do that consistently in there, that's for sure. You lost Richard English as well, John, and it didn't really upset you, actually. We did, but like, you know, them boys have been fighting hard for that, you know, those three births. You know, Dan has been fighting hard. He came back off of, a, you know, a, a spring where he had a number of hamstring injuries, you know, repeated ones. So, you know, he didn't get any continuity in his work during the spring. So it was hard for him to, to, to you know, to get in there. And Richie came back from injury, sorry. And, you know, Richie had a consistent league. You know, he was able to play every, every game, you know. So, um, yeah. Competition is important to us, you know, and, and, you know, the impact off the bench is hugely important. You know, Aaron made a great impact, Dan made a great impact, David Reedy, Connor Boyle and Pat Ryan, you know, uh, um, uh, Robbie Hanley, they all came off the bench and made a big impact, you know, and that's what you need to have, you know, you have to have it. So, yeah, listen, it's, uh, it's going to be hopefully very competitive in the weeks ahead now, hopefully. John, you referenced 2019 there, and obviously... I presume that's something you'll be hammering home over the next couple of weeks with the lads. Like, is that something that you carry with you, the frustration that maybe you should be, you know, have, have even more achieved at this stage? Not at all. No, not at all. My God, absolutely not. You know, we're very, very grateful for anything that we've achieved. Anything. And everything that we've achieved, we're very, very grateful for it. And if we can win anything else going forward, we'll be more than grateful for that as well, I can assure you. Because look, look, look where we were an hour ago, you know, 11 points down hurling terribly you know we can't take anything for granted um, but we we have tremendous supporters with us today right throughout the half yeah on the Kyle Hayes goal cracking goal delighted for him he's had a really tough week you know Darren O'Connell as well uh, their, their good friend Darren Whelan passed away tragically last weekend. It's an awful blow to them young lads and it's a reminder to us all the fragility of life and we saw it again this weekend um, with, with uh, um, you know, Monaghan's captain, um, sorry, yeah, bringing old Duffy, you know, what a, what a terrible, terrible tragedy, you know, all valuable young men and their families and their, in their communities making a huge difference to their communities and to, the, you know, to their wider communities. We're just grateful that we have these young men, all of us in Tipperary and Limerick and Galway and Cork and wherever they are from. You know, we're very lucky to have them and we have to try and mind them. You know, uh, terrible tragedies and desperate losses. And it, it hits these boys tremendously when like, something like that happens. But, you know, hats off to Kyle. You know, it was difficult for him to do what he did today. 
Uh, at times he found it hard outside there on the pitch, but like everything Kyle does, he gives it his all and there's no reverse. It's only going forward with Kyle Hayes and that's the bottom line. And I hope that's the way he'll continue to be and you know, he can dedicate that performance to his great friend.